Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're back at Or Acura in Shreveport, Louisiana. And this is the 2024 Acura MDX Type S. And before any of the little correction Nazis or YouTube trolls show up in the comment section saying, that's not a 2024, it's a 23. That's how their voices sound, don't you know? There you go, it's on the sticker. It is indeed a 2024 model, and I'm having to stick this down inside this area right here so it doesn't blow away. The wind's blowing a little bit today. But I wanted to show that just so that you can see that this is indeed a 2024 model, and we're gonna give you a lot of information to help answer the question. Does it have the right features for the right price? The exterior color on this model is liquid carbon, it has an ebony interior. I like the contrast stitching right here with the red. That really sets things off nicely. And so right off the bat, what are the advantages of one of these MDX models? Whether it's a Type S or not, you're gonna find a very comfortable interior that's roomy, not only for driver and passengers, but also for cargo capacity. You'll also find an unusual situation, a balance of sporty handling and a comfortable ride quality. You usually don't have both. Often it's one or the other, and especially with this Type S, you're gonna have a lot more performance capabilities. We'll give you that information shortly. You get a lot of technology and driving aids for the money. So let's dig in a little bit deeper and find out what you get with this Type S trim level. And we're going to start off here on the front end. The front fascia is unique to the Type S trim level. You're gonna find the multi-jewel LED headlights, the chicane LED daytime running lights. You're also going to have the LED fog lights down there on the lower portion of the bumper. You do have a lot of gloss black here on the front end, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Obviously, the common problem with gloss black or piano black finishes is the fact that it fingerprints up. Well, I don't think people are gonna be walking up and touching that area, right? One thing you'll notice here is there's a lot more airflow going into the front end. The way this is designed to give more air for the engine with increased performance, well, that's an important thing. Gonna have that Obviously, very nice looking Type S logo in a number of places here on the exterior of the MDX. The big Acura logo prominently displayed right there in the center of the front grill. And with SH all wheel drive, let's talk a little bit about tire and wheel size. Very, very large tires, or wide, I should say, more than large, 275 on the width. That is a wide tire. A lot of meat going to the ground, providing for great traction. You're going to have a 40 series sidewall and the 21 inch wheels. You'll also find the red brake calipers that really set things off nicely. I think that just has a nice look here as far as what that does for this MDX Type S. You'll also find that you have a little larger remote. That's one thing that, again, sets this off the Type S logo there on the back of the remote. And obviously, all of your typical features here, you have remote start and all that good stuff. Your gloss black mirror caps with your power adjustable heated side view mirrors, turn signal indicators built in, and obviously, the proximity key as well. So you've got the walk away feature, all that good stuff is here. And again, quite a bit of gloss black in a multi multitude of places, as long as we don't get me tongue twisted trying to say multitude, <laughs> we're gonna have the roof rails up there that is kind of broken up by the shark fin antenna that is body color, a little more of that gloss black surrounding the windows in a few different areas there as well as on the door sills and the trim. So a really nice look here. It gives it a nice sporty look. Finishing things off with a combination of the gloss black and the body color on the rear roof spoiler. We'll also have the LED taillights that have the same basic design as what we see on the front. So a nice complement there and quad tip exhaust here on the rear. That's going to give us a nice sound, multiple driving modes to drive in, depending on what you want to do. In fact, speaking of that, why don't we pop the hood 
and talk about numbers as far as horsepower and torque go. Under the hood is the direct injection turbocharged 3 liter V6. It makes a plentiful 355 horsepower, 354 pounds feet of torque, and it's mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And with that kind of number in horsepower and torque, what do you have for MPGs? Well, let's take a look. 17 city, 21 highway, 19 combined, and Acura says you should use 5.3 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive. I don't think that's too bad. Might be hard to achieve that if you have a heavy right foot, but you just have to deal with it. And as I said earlier, you do have the power folding side view mirrors. I didn't get to show that to you earlier because I had the interior unlocked and the lights on and all that kind of stuff. So we didn't show that at that point. But just so you can see what's there, where that is concerned, if you're saying, do they really fold? Now you know they do. And by the way, if you were curious, you have an 18 and a half gallon gas tank. It does have capless fuel fill, but when you lock the vehicle, which I will demonstrate right now, we're gonna go ahead and lock the vehicle. That also locks the gas door. So somebody can't just easily come and open that and gain access to your gas tank. Although there are a couple of baffles in there that would make it very difficult to get anything into your gas tank if you're worried about that. If you have enemies who have a sweet tooth and a lot of sugar around the house that they'd like to share with your gas tank, well, that's not going to happen, at least not very easily. And you can tow up to 5,000 pounds. And one thing you know when you see this sticker back here on the tailgate is going to be, or the lift gate, I should say, is going to be the fact that you have the feature here where it's hands-free, if Tom can get that to work. There we go. And you don't have to just swipe your foot across like I did. You can also use a kicking motion. I just do it that way because it's a little bit easier. At least on the second try, it's a little bit easier. And you can change the height of the rear door when you change it. Let's just say I wanted to raise it up a little bit. You hold the button down until you hear the beeps, multiple beeps, right there. And what I just did was reset the height. You're looking at 18.1 up to 95 cubic feet of cargo capacity. You're going to have the 12 volt power outlet right here. And then we have the button right there. That's the walk away feature. So what is that exactly? Well, notice I pushed that and it beeped one time. So here's the thing, I'm just standing here. Let's just say that I just wanted to gather up all the groceries back here as a lot of us often do and make one trip into the house. Even if you're carrying 50 bags, 25 in each hand, right? We all do it. But you stand here, you gather everything up and you just want to walk away and let the door close. Watch this, that's exactly what's going to happen. I pushed that button and didn't have to do anything else. As long as you're standing there under the door, it's going to stay open. When you walk away, it takes a second to two seconds. I don't know the exact time frame on that, but it does close after a little bit of time. And as you can see, after I reset the height, there is the difference. Now, let's take a look at some of the additional capacity for storage here. You have the two-sided floor right here, so you can actually flip this floor over and use the plastic side if you wanted to. And because I'm not as talented one-handed, I had to flip that over with two hands. But you can see that I did that. And there's also another additional feature here. You can actually stick that down in there if you wanted to. There's a lot of different options here. You can do this if you need to use this area, but you don't want to get anything dirty underneath because you do have the carpet down there as far as the surface goes. If you needed to use plastic, but you were maybe hauling around something with sand or dirt or whatever it is in there, and you didn't want to get the carpet dirty, well, here's an option for you, and you do have a couple of different locations where you can do that. And if you are curious to see how things look with the rear seats in their upright position, well, there you go. You can see that. We can also maximize cargo capacity, obviously by lowering all of the different areas of the seats right here. And there's actually a few different little tricks you can use here. We can also remove that middle seat right there. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And because I've had a lot of people complain in the comments and say they want to see all of the seats lowered, it's not as if you can't use your imagination to figure out what that looks like, but there's what you have. And one thing I like here is that it's relatively flat. It's not completely flat, but it has a tiny, tiny bit of an angle to it. Not enough to really hurt anything. So that's going to help as well as far as cargo capacity goes. And like I said, you can remove this seat. So 
How do you do that? Well, we're first going to lower this seat back down. And then there's another release down here you're going to pull on. That allows to tilt the seat forward and then just basically pick it up and get it out. And I'll show you where you can store that. And there we go. We've removed the middle seat. And I'm not talented enough to show you how to do that one-handed, so you'll just have to trust me on that. But here's the evidence. You can put the seat back here in this area if you want to, an easy way to keep up with everything. So just another option to help maximizing cargo capacity in kind of an unusual way. All right, taking a look in through the left side door, or driver's side door into the rear area of the vehicle, the passenger area back here, we're going to have the privacy shades that can be put in place if middle row seat passengers so desire to do so. Pretty easy to deal with. Nice comfortable armrest, but since it's been sitting out in the sun for a while, I'm not going to give it the armrest test, but it is nice and soft. I can tell you that. There's more of that red contrast stitching we mentioned earlier in the video. Nice large door bends, and you can see that you have a lot of space here within this area of the vehicle. You also have the panoramic sunroof. And to gain access to that third row, all you have to do is push this button right here. The seats get up and out of the way. Now, before we do that, I do want to show one thing here. Notice that the seat over there on the right-hand side of the vehicle is all the way forward. And while that may be a little unrealistic, that gives an idea as to potential leg space that's available in this third row area. So let's see what it's really like back here. I'll give it to you in real time. So for me, well, at five foot 10, that's what happens with the seat all the way back. And you get to see that the wind has been wreaking havoc with my hair today. That's how much room I have above my head, just in case you're curious. So five foot 10, that'll tell you right there but you also have that much more leg space right there. So that's a good thing. You're going to have a cup holder right there and a USB option. That's always a good thing as far as that goes. And if the middle row seat passengers hop out and forget about who's back here, no big deal. All you have to do is push this button and there you go. The seats are up. Still have to slide them just a little bit to get that up and out of the way, but no big deal. You can hop right out. And just so you know, with the panoramic sunroof, there is a power shade available. A little bit of space here with the storage pockets on the back of both seats, the driver and the passenger side, and the command center right here. We're going to have the fan speed, the temperature. We can control the heated seats, which we most certainly don't need today. It's headed for 104 degrees and connectivity with the power outlet, a couple of USBs, and a 12 volt. A little something for everybody. And looking into the front seat through the passenger side door, we'll take a look at the door panel. There you go, more of that nice red contrast stitching, the ebony interior. And here I can actually test the armrest because it hasn't been in the sun for long. That's already a little warm. It's hot today. Nice large door bin. Power seats for the driver and the passenger. Both are heated and ventilated. Thankfully for ventilation, today is a good time to use that. The Type S logo on the door sills as well as on the floor mats down there and then we'll hop inside and we'll see something that we don't see on a lot of vehicles but i think we should see it on more if you have seat memory on the driver's side you should also have it here on the passenger side in this case you do you get what you pay for here i told you you get a lot for the money that's a nice feature you don't see on a lot of vehicles we will have some more gloss black across the dashboard here as far as some of the trim goes the decorative trim and that red contrast stitching continues its way all the way through the interior a nice large and comfortable with this kind of felt like material here within the center console you're also going to find another 12 volt power outlet right here quite a bit going on in the way of connectivity and the hidden away USB options, a couple of different options right there. You will also see that you have dual zone climate control here in the front. We're going to have, as I said, the heated and ventilated seats. I dare not leave the heated seat function on today, but we'll just demonstrate that it's there. Here's your push button shifter, your drive mode selector. In fact, let's go ahead and run through those drive modes real quick. You're going to have comfort, I'll show you the graphics that come up with that. We're also going to have normal. There is going to be sport mode. And if you 
let's go back up real quick before I do that. We're going to have the snow mode and you're also going to have lift. This vehicle does actually have the air suspension that allows it to lift up. And then if you want to go down here to one more option, you have the dynamic mode right here. All I did was push the button right here just so that you can see how that looks and how that works. And we'll also have some cup holders here. Here is your wireless charging pad. And what I think is a conveniently located lid for the center console because it doubles as an armrest as well here in the center. So that's a good thing. Depending on where the seats are positioned, that's going to be beneficial. Now there are a couple of extra areas of storage, one including right here on the top. So we'll actually use the button that is located right down here. It's on the lid itself. Or we can use that and get into the center console itself and reveal a little bit more in the way of connectivity options. And here's the control for that power shade I was telling you about and the ability to open the power sunroof. And let's take a look at the differences in ride height. So here is your basically your stock ride height. And hopefully you can tell the difference with that air suspension when I went to lift. I showed you that on the screen earlier. There is additional ride height. I hope that shows up on the screen, but it is sitting a little bit higher now. And you likely don't need me to tell you too much about the additional buttons and switches here on the driver's side door panel. You do have the button right down here to open and close that power tailgate or lift gate back there. And then we also have the option here to control the head up display. So I'm going to try and show that to you real quick. If I can get into a darker atmosphere, I'm going to show you a little bit more of what this looks like in the dark, but you can control that and other features here as well, such as traction control and all that good stuff here. You can see what's here. As far as your safety features go, I've got road departure up there right now. You also have adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist and all the good features. They're all here so much. I'm not going to mention every single one, but it is here. You also have the ability to turn your lights on and off. That's where you're going to turn those fog lights on and off. And this is a multitasker. It's also the control for the blinkers or the turn signals that I know some of you know what I'm talking about and some of you don't. I've driven around you. Believe me, I know. And here's the control for all of the front and rear window wiper capabilities. All of that is there. Your steering wheel mounted controls and the nice large shifter paddles to help control that 10 speed automatic transmission. And one thing that I know a lot of people have varying opinions about, you do have the push button shifter right there, but you also do not have a touch screen here. For some people, that's no big deal because there was a time when there wasn't such a thing as a touch screen and nobody griped and complained about that. So you will use the trackpad right here. I don't think it's that terribly difficult to get used to. You just navigate your way around here. When you're ready to select something, you push down on the trackpad to do that. And we can go in and take a look. Another question to be answered from a lot of people is, does it have built-in navigation? Well, it does, as you can see. You also have ambient lighting here. Something else that I hope to be able to show you in just a little bit. We'll see if we can or not. It is here, whether we can show you or not. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But let's go into reverse, and I'll show you some of the cameras. You have the overhead 360-degree view. You also have multiple views here as far as being able to see around the vehicle. It really helps a lot because, well, depending on where you are, what you're doing, you can make changes to what you're seeing and all that good stuff. It's always helpful to be able to do that. And as you can see, there is our front view and doesn't look like we have a front camera washer. Uh, just checking to see about that. Some vehicles have it, some vehicles don't. Apparently we don't have that here. Another view from our side view mirrors. So that is a nice feature, looks very nice and gives you a lot of great ability to be able to see what's going on around the vehicle if you're in a tight parking space. Uh, maybe somebody parked closer than they should have. Maybe you parked in a parking space that had people who were parked too close. So that makes it easy to see what's going on around you when you're pulling in and pulling out and all of that good stuff. And speaking of pulling in and pulling out, that's probably the best way to give a good segue to our test drive. 
Okay, unfortunately I couldn't find as dark of an atmosphere as I wanted to to be able to show you the lighting. So I don't know that you can see it as well, but there is ambient lighting within the interior here in this MDX. But I did want to show you what I can show you here, which is all the different options that you can go in and change to if you wanted to go down to the Vegas Strip with the lighting and the interior of your MDX Type S, well, you can do that. So obviously a lot of options here. This is one of those days where unfortunately I just didn't have a lot of control over the situations as far as what was available. This is the only place I could get into to film, but just so you know, it is here. It is nice and bright. You can actually go in, and I'll come back here and show you real quick. You can change the brightness. So we have it set to max right now. You can go to high. You can use whatever you want there. We have a couple of lows. We have low, mid, and then you can turn it off if you want to. But just so you can see what's here, that's what you're going to have. I just I apologize that you probably can't see it too well on the screen as far as the lighting itself goes, but it is here. Okay, I'm out on the road for the test drive and everything that I've experienced so far here, it really just magnifies all of the different points I've made of what this MDX Type S is. It's a balance of being comfortable. It handles great. The ride quality is good. You have plenty of room in the interior for not only the driver and the passengers, but you have all that space back there. For cargo capacity, you can even tow a little bit back there if you need to, like we've said, up to 5,000 pounds with this particular configuration of all-wheel drive. There's a lot going here. And while I know some people are saying, well, why, why isn't this a touchscreen? Well, you can see why. I can't reach it. That's not a good thing. So you wouldn't want to be reaching up and messing with that. And you really shouldn't be doing that while you're driving, obviously, anyway. But it's just easier uh, with the trackpad. So. Who knows, we might see a full redesign in the next couple of years or so with the MDX, which I believe the last full redesign came for the 2022 model year, so it might be a little while, we'll wait and see. But when that happens, maybe we'll see a touchscreen. But in the meantime, this is what we have, and maybe some of you who own an MDX, a 22 or newer, can tell us what you think in the comments about what it's like to use the screen with with the trackpad. I think once you get used to it, it's not that big of a deal. So depending on your situation, you may already be used to something like that. You may have never had this kind of technology before, so you may not know the difference. There's a lot of different scenarios that can play out where that's concerned. But the one thing I really like here is that beside Besides everything we've talked about so far on the test drive is you also have the ability to take advantage of all that horsepower you have available under the hood. And depending on the driving mode that you're in, well, we'll determine how well you get down the road. I mean, even here in just comfort mode, I am just having absolutely no trouble getting down the road and getting up to as much speed as I so desire to get to, depending on my situation. If I need to merge into traffic on the interstate, which obviously, hint, hint, for some of you Shreveport drivers, and I know this goes on all over the place, you need to be driving a, a little faster than the traffic or at least the speed of, but really a little faster so you can merge in. Don't drive under the speed limit or anything like that. You won't have any trouble getting up to speed here. Or if you're passing, passing a slower moving car on a two lane road, when it's safe to do so, you will not have any trouble and you can change to the appropriate driving mode depending on what your situation is with that. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video that I do want to make sure I mention while we're out here on the test drive is the fact that you do have a power adjustable, tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. So literally as the driver, you can set things however you want, whatever it takes to be comfortable, you can do that. And we're going to start off here on the front end. The front fascia is unique to the Type S trim level. You're gonna find the multi-jewel LED headlights, the chicane LED daytime running lights. You're also going to have the LED fog lights down there on the lower portion of the bumper. You do have a lot of gloss black here on the front end, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Obviously, the common problem with gloss black or piano black finishes is the fact that it fingerprints up. Well, I don't think people are going to be walking up and touching that area, right? One thing you'll notice here is there's a lot more airflow going into the front end. The way this is designed to give more air for the engine with 
increased performance, well, that's an important thing. Gonna have that obviously very nice looking Type S logo in a number of places here on the exterior of the MDX. The big Acura logo prominently displayed right there in the center of the front grille. And with SH all-wheel drive, let's talk a little bit about tire and wheel size. Very, very large tires, or wide, I should say, more than large, 275 on the width. That is a wide tire. A lot of meat going to the ground, providing for great traction. You're going to have a 40 series sidewall and the 21 inch wheels. You'll also find the red brake calipers that really set things off nicely. I think that just has a nice look here as far as what that does for this MDX Type S. You'll also find that you have a little larger remote. That's one thing that again sets this off the Type S logo there on the back of the remote. And obviously all of your typical features here, you have remote start and all that good stuff. Your gloss black mirror caps with your power adjustable heated side view mirrors, turn signal indicators built in, and obviously the proximity key as well. So you've got the walk away feature, all that good stuff is here. And again, quite a bit of gloss black in a multi multitude of places, as long as we don't get any tongue twisted trying to say multitude, we're gonna have the roof rails up there that is kind of broken up by the shark fin antenna that is body color. A little more of that gloss black surrounding the windows in a few different areas there, as well as on the door sills and the trim. So a really nice look here. It gives it a nice sporty look. Finishing things off with a combination of the gloss black and the body color on the rear roof spoiler. We'll also have the LED taillights that have the same basic design as what we see on the front. So a nice complement there and quad tip exhaust here on the rear. That's going to give us a nice sound, multiple driving modes to drive in depending on what you want to do. In fact, speaking of that, why don't we pop the hood and talk about numbers as far as horsepower and torque go.